Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzard Kay, and today I'm here to offer you an update in the Madeline Soto case. Yesterday, we watched a live press conference that was March 1st of 2024, and then right after that, I filmed a video for you guys so that you have a complete timeline overview. And we were saying, based on everything we heard, we really hope that the police are able to locate Madeline's body. Now, if you don't know anything about this case, please check out the video that I put in the description box for you, because there I go over everything so that you are up to speed. But basically, 13-year-old Madeline Soto, who had literally just turned 13, her birthday was on February 22nd, a week ago. And then on Sunday, the 25th, she had celebrated her birthday with her family. It sounds like her mom wasn't at that party, which... Could be a little strange. I don't know. We'll have to see as more information unfolds. You know, maybe she was working that day and couldn't make it or something. But she celebrated her birthday with her family members. And her mom said she had the best day on Sunday and uh, showed off all her gifts and everything and then went to bed. And then the next day, you know, there was the story of the mom's boyfriend taking her to school, which was not true. It wasn't true. So now that we know that actually he had put... What police have said, they've got video evidence of Madeline's body in his vehicle. And propped upright is what it sounds like, which is really scary to think of. And he had thrown her laptop away, her backpack away, and then had driven somewhere. And they gave us some clues yesterday saying, we need your help. This is where we think he had a flat tire. So we did some map time. I'm going to show you that again as well. This, by the way, in the background is footage of the moment where they had discovered Madeline's body. So, of course, uh, the chopper is very respectful and just showing where the police are and not where exactly the body is. So we don't know the exact location, but when you see this on the map, you'll see that this guy drove pretty far, thinking, I think he thought he's so smart, but uh, yeah, as we've learned, he's not. So the thing is, we're going to look at the maps because they told us on this old uh, Hickory road or lane, he may have had a flat tire. And after that press conference yesterday, someone actually called in a tip. And the police went to that area and they located Madeline's body. So really, if you see something, say something. Really always like and share the press conferences and the flyers because you just don't know who hasn't heard about it yet. Or, you know, maybe they thought, huh, I saw like a really suspicious dude out there that day, but I'm not sure what it was. And then they see the press conference or they see the flyer or social media post. They call it in, and that's the exact tip that the police need, because it sounds like something that happened here. You know, right after that press conference, all the police cars started going towards this area. Let me show it to you on the map right now. Okay, so this case happened in Orlando, Florida, starting at this Venetian Bay Villages condominiums. This is where Madeline lived with her mom, and I think the boyfriend also lived there. I'm still trying to figure out why that day he picked her up to take her to school, and then, like, what happened along the way. And wait till you see his interview that we're going to see right after this, where he's like, yeah, she was, you know, asleep most of the way. That's pretty scary in hindsight, if you think of what he's actually saying. So, um, starting over there, he would have left there, I would assume if this whole journey is 45 minutes. And they say he had a flat tire out there sometime between 1 and 2.30 p.m. on February 26th, which was a Monday. Well, would he have left then, you know, like 12-ish or something? And what was he doing between half past 8 in the morning and 12-ish, because it was around 8.30-ish that the police have video evidence of Madeline in his car. And that was after he'd already thrown away her laptop and bag things. So what did he do between half past 8 and 12-ish, half past 12-ish? Anyway, so he went uh, for this long drive here. Now, initially, they said he may have had a flat tire around this area. So we were looking at this State Road 192, this old Hickory Tree Road, and then Nolte Road, you see there? But it turns out, based on, you know, what the chopper was showing, and I was trying really hard to find exactly where they were standing yesterday, and it seems to me like it's more here. So it's still this road called uh, Hickory Tree Road. It's just looped all the way around here, 
And it's somewhere around here that they were standing. You know, you could see these uh, long white, is it, I don't know, irrigation pipes or something here, and these fields, and I think they were standing there, so her body was located somewhere in this area. Now, if you think of that message that was apparently on her phone saying, when I turn 13, I'm going to go live in the woods, um, many speculated, what if he wrote that message, and that's pretty sinister, what if it's premeditated, who knows, right? We don't know yet, we only know that he's been charged with sexual battery, and for, you know, all the things that were found on his phone, so far, I'm obviously not going to be surprised if he's now charged with murder. We'll have to see when that is, and I will keep you posted. But the thing is, if this, if she was found in this wooded area, yeah, in hindsight, of course, it's a very, very scary message. Thankfully, this guy is really not a smart criminal at all. Not only did he do media interviews and, you know, wiping away non-tears and saying things that's just like true crime classics, you know, it's those interviews like a Chris Watts when it's just like, I just want them home. He's the same type. So not only that, but he threw Madeline's backpack and laptop away in the dumpster right there at the apartment complex. And then also thinking he's so smart, you know, to go and dump her body somewhere out here. Like no one would ever know. I mean, the whole world's going to know. Yeah, everybody knew this. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of times these Criminals also don't suspect the cases to go so viral, and they don't all go so viral, unfortunately. I wish they all did, right? But, sure, I don't think he thought this would be such a big deal. Like, no one's going to know. They're not going to look out there. No, they're going to look out there. They're going to know where your phone went. They're going to know where your car went. There's going to be eyewitnesses, and they're going to know. I mean, he was arrested very quickly, swiftly. February 28th, he was already arrested. So, you know, he's been the prime suspect for uh, from day one, just about. So... This is around the area where they found Madeline's body. So I'm glad that they were able to recover her body because I was really worried, as you can see, is Alligator Lake. I mean, if she, it depends how close she was to the water as well. Maybe he was thinking that she'd be alligator food, which is very, very scary. You know, I was worried that he's going to put her in this water. Maybe he was too scared to. And that uh, she'll never be found. But thankfully, she was. I, I wonder what her mom is thinking now. It must be really shocking if she had no idea what was going on in the house and if she had no idea what happened that day that's just the story that he told her that no I took her there and then you know she wanted to be dropped off early and at the church and then she walked the rest of the way and the grainy video and all that maybe that's just the story that he was feeding her you know the boyfriend was feeding Madeline's mom this who knows um but can you imagine she's just lost her daughter and her boyfriend all in one week so sure Okay, now, you've seen the map time? We saw a little bit of that top of footage. Now I want to show you the interview. Um, it is of Madeline's mom and of her, you know, Madeline's mom's boyfriend, the guy that's been arrested, the prime suspect. And just watch especially what the prime suspect says. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so before we get started, this is Madeline's mom, Jen. And ironically, she works at Disney World. Remember, he was pretending to. Disney had to come forward and say he doesn't work here. So that's interesting as well. And according to uh, Madeline's grandmother's interview, which I think was in Spanish. I was trying to think, is it Portuguese or Spanish? I think it was in Spanish. There, somewhere, she said that um, Jen had actually worked that day. You know, the Sunday, the night before. And she would have been really tired on the Monday morning. And that's probably why she asked her boyfriend to take Madeline to school because the family is saying that's not normal for him to take her to school it's not normal for her to be dropped off at the church now we know she was never dropped off at that church near the school again if you don't know about any of these of these things I'm saying please check out the video that I did for you yesterday because you're going to get a good timeline overview of this entire case this is really just a follow-up um, of information also, remember to check my community tab because the minute that the news broke that they'd found her body, I had made a whole lengthy post on my community tab and it just seems like many, many people missed it. So just check that out from time to time because if there's breaking news like that and it's one or two in the morning for me, you know, then sometimes I'm going to put it on my community tab and then like today, the next day, I'll film a video for you and update you or a YouTube short or something. Okay, so let's have a look um, at this interview. Okay. So the first question is if I can have your first and your last name and spell them both out for me. Okay. Jennifer Soto, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, 
S O T O. Mother. Mother. Jennifer, tell me how you feeling right now. I feel like I can't breathe. All I keep thinking about is where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? But we're we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. We're just so worried. When did you first realize, or when did you file a missing report? We filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like 4:45 uh, yesterday, 4:45 uh, p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning, around between 8:45 and 9 o'clock in the morning. She went missing. So here, Jane is saying that she called 911 to report her missing at 4.45 p.m., so that helps clear it up a bit. Obviously, we don't have the actual call or the actual, you know, dispatch records for exactly what time it was made, but it was around 4.45 p.m. when Jennifer had realized her daughter never made it to school, which is also a problem. It would have been great if the school could have notified her earlier because a whole day went by, you know, before Jennifer even knew. So at 4.45 they called and apparently at 8 p.m. the police started their investigation. Um, we had dropped her off close to the school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. You share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Which, it's quite interesting because at this point, when this interview was done, it was uh, the day after Melon went missing, right? So this would have been on the 27th. It's only just been uploaded to YouTube now. And so, you know, to already say, I don't know what I'm allowed to share, or at that point, it was a missing child case. Like, share as much as you possibly can. I don't know if at that point, the police would have said, don't share this or You know what I mean? Also, I know that you guys are going to say, because we've said it with every interview that we've analyzed so far, if you've missed the two live streams, go and check that out, because we did check out the other interviews already. Um, and there, when... Madeline's mom here is saying, we took her to school. I think she's speaking, you know, as if, you know, there's a couple of one or a unit, even though she was probably not there. Because she later says in both interviews, he took her to school. So maybe she's just used to saying, we did this and we did that, you know, like typical, I don't know, almost codependent couple talk. You know what I mean? It's just, we, we went here and we went there, but really it's only one of them. Only he went, apparently, and dropped her off, not anywhere near the school. Oh, no, no, no. I know you had conversations with detectives. Um, not sure what that conversation <clears throat> is, but whichever you feel comfortable sharing that we put the awareness out there. Yeah, she was uh, spotted walking uh, by the church, by the middle school uh, on the cameras. They saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. They didn't see a vehicle or anything else. They just saw her walk away. Uh, around 9 a.m. heading towards the school but she never made it um unfortunately that wasn't her at all so there's a girl out there that was wearing a green sweater and who was apparently hanging out at the church and then walked to school but that was not madeline yeah. what has the school said have you given any contact with the school yes um that they're doing everything they can they've given me all their resources the principals called me. They've looked at their cameras. Cameras, um, I don't think they've caught anything. The cameras is too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy, so they can't see specific faces. Um, but they've looked. Um, I'm just waiting to hear anything else from them. Is this normal behavior? Not to at all. To just not 
show up or call or text or anything? Not at all, no. Um, she, from time to time, she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally, and that's actually what happened yesterday. She left her phone at home. She went to school. Um, but that happens from time to time. She's got ADHD. Uh, her memory, <laughs> she's very forgetful. Um, so, yeah, there's no way to track her right now because I have, well, the detectives now have her phone. Uh, but this isn't normal behavior, no. What was the last thing, I guess, that the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Um, we spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working. But she had an amazing which clears up why she couldn't make it because, you know, from the first interview we saw, we were like, why on earth could a mom not make it to a 13th birthday party with all the other family members? Of course, uh, Madeline's birthday was on the Thursday, the 22nd, but um, Jennifer says she was working. Now, I don't know if she couldn't get off work. I know people are still going to say, why couldn't she take off work? Maybe it was just an extra birthday party because they would have celebrated on Thursday. That we just don't know. Amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her good night, and um, yeah, that was it. I, I, I was the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah. Thirteen. She's thirteen years old. Yes. Thirteen. Madeline. 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 Um, what are you thinking right now? In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. This isn't like her to just pick up and run away um, or just not go to school. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what to think. Friends, the friend's parents, you've contacted and Everyone. went through every single person? Everyone that we know that she knows. We've contacted them all, reached out to them. The parents have gone out to search and look for her as well. I, mean I really do wonder if the police at some point told Jennifer and Stefan to stay at home. Because if they didn't, that is so strange that they didn't go out and search. Because Jennifer will say, you know, her family's gone all out. They've, they've got flyers going. They're out there searching. There's other people's, you know... Um, other kids parents searching but then why are they not searching did they tell them to stay at home you know while they were busy with the investigation i wonder we haven't come up with anything yet i've seen a lot of posts on uh, facebook um hunter's creek rants and raves and what have you did people um say that they were going to conduct some type of like search party or anything uh, a lot of people have asked me to volunteer like if there is one if the, if they can do one um, there, I have people passing out flyers, going to every store in that vicinity, a gas station, church. Um, I think people people were being stopped in the street this morning in front of the school to see if they've seen anything, if they've heard anything. My family is they're going all out right now. Um, yeah. I know, as a mother, you have a lot. It almost looks like it overwhelms her that her family is going like all out right now. But of course, even if they, even if in the past they are the types to go all out and that is too much for Jennifer, in this scenario, it's completely appropriate to go all out. Because at this point, your 13 year old daughter is missing. So I completely understand. I mean, I'm on the sus bus with you guys of like this interview and the other ones we've looked at are so strange that one has to wonder if Jennifer knew that her daughter was no longer alive. Because it's like the strangest responses. There's, you know, she really does look like a deer in the headlights here. She's really like looking scared. And maybe she is scared. That's another possibility. Maybe she's like, oh my word. If she knew that he killed her daughter. Well, maybe he's like, you're next. If you say anything, you just never know what the threats were like at the home, right? is going on in your brain um so much to bring her back home 
what have what the the law enforcement told you that you are able to share? I mean that they're doing the best they can. Uh, they've had detectives come out interview us. They took a piece of her clothing for the canine dog to see if they can sniff her out. I'm not sure when that's being done. Um, Do you have any inkling where she possibly could be? Like if you would say, okay, last time um, I went to work and came back, she was at James house or, or, or Sabrina's house and maybe I forgot to check that house or she played at this park one week and maybe she went back there or something like that. We've looked everywhere we could have thought I and mean, anywhere she would have been. Um, she would have known to wait for me at the school. Um, but we did check where if she could have walked. Um, my mom's office is close to the school. We checked there. We checked the walking paths that she could have taken. We've checked all of her friend's house. I think we've checked everywhere I could think of, honestly. What do you think, um, oh gosh, I just had it tip my tongue. What was she wearing? She was last seen wearing a green hoodie, black shorts, white Crocs, a black Jan Sport backpack with gray hibiscus flowers on it. And you said this is not like her. Not at all. To run away, an argument, anything like that. I don't know if you find it interesting. Could be interesting that she said she was last seen wearing, almost like, you know, reciting the poster. I don't know. I'm not convinced that she saw her, you know, in that, in what she was last seen wearing. Especially if police believe that Madeline was uh, already deceased in the early hours of the morning, you know. Then was she actually in PJs? Was she really wearing that? I don't know. Or is that what, you know, and she wouldn't have worn that at her birthday party. So does she change into that that night? I just don't know. It just seems more like, you know, reciting bullet points. I'm not really, I'm not pointing, okay, fingers at this lady. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, huh. It's not the usual that you see like, okay, okay. So she was last wearing this, 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 you know, it's like she was, Last seen uh, wearing, you know? Had to provoke her. She's never done anything like this, no. And we haven't had any arguments recently to have this outcome. What school? Hunters Creek Middle School. Tom, any questions? No. Is there anything that you think our viewers would need to know about the way you're feeling, the way the family's feeling, Madeline? We are desperate for any answers, anything that you could do to help. I'm here for it. Just please, if, if you see my daughter, just please bring her home. I just hope you're okay, Maddie. I hope you're safe. I hope you're not hurt. I just hope she's okay. In my opinion, she knows she's not okay during this interview. But that's my opinion. Let me know what you think. But even, you know, that like everything she's saying there, it's, it's, it's as if she knows that she's not coming home. And it's not like, well, what can people do? Well, help find her. Get out there. Help find her. Distribute flyers. You know, I don't know. It's just like, um... If if you if you find her, bring her home. You're right, right? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading all your comments about this. When um when did you notice that she was missing? Because this was at the beginning of the, the morning. Um she got dropped off in the morning. We did not notice until after school pickup at four at four o'clock when I went to go pick her up and she wasn't at school. So we're going in twenty four hours now. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. No word. No text message. No messages anywhere from her. I've looked at all her social medias. I've looked at all her games she could have played with. Any, any. Which does tell me she had social media because people asked during the live stream, does she have social media? 
And my answer was, I couldn't find any. And also you need to be 13 to be able to have Instagram, to have a YouTube channel, to have TikTok. So seeing as she just turned 13, I wasn't sure if she had any social media accounts, even though she may have whipped up some accounts and had them even below 13, as we know many kids do. But here her mom says, I checked her social media, I checked the games she was playing, all that kind of stuff. So she must have had some sort of social media, yes. The app, no weird conversations, no, nothing strange. Everything was conversations with just normal friends or us. Did she knows how to get home by herself? As if like, let's just say, take a, to take a bus or an Uber or something like that. She would know how to get home alone, correct? I'm not sure. I don't know if she would know how to get home. Maybe, I mean, if someone, I'm thinking if someone got in the car with her and, and if she pointed the way, what roads, she probably could figure out how to get, but like, does she know her full address? I don't think, she, I don't think she does. Which would give me the, which, I mean, it just puts in my brain that she always comes home with with someone. She always comes home so with me. there's no need for her to really exactly. learn. Okay. And you said no time? I think that was everything. Oh. Alright, the first one. And here we go. We got the perp, guys. We got the suspect. 37-year-old Stefan Stearns, who did atrocious things to children. We can only assume as Madeline, but they've redacted the names. There's lots of child sexual abuse material they found on his phone. And so, yeah, you're going to feel, feel pretty nauseous when you hear him call her baby girl in this interview. Like, oh, no, no, no. You're also going to see no actual tears streaming down his face, but he wipes with that tissue. And so the, seeing this, mm, it's atrocious. Are you ready? Buckle up. Here we go. Question is if I can get your first... And last name is spelled them both out for me. Stephen Stearns, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-S-T-E-R-N-S. All right, so Stephen, you seem very emotional right now. Explain to us. I dropped her off. You seem very emotional to us. He's like, yes, because now he's the victim, remember? And it's like, explain. And he's like, oh, I dropped her off. Oh, you're going straight into the timeline. Your narrative, you're not even saying why you feel emotional, like, well, I am emotional because it's really hard and I don't know where she is. Is she cold? Is she hungry? Is she safe? Like, oh, no, no, just straight into the timeline. Like, yeah, it's so hard. Okay, I dropped her off. And just watch, just observe very carefully how he's looking down now and everything. I think he's seeing a lot there, you know, in his mind. Looked fine when I drove away. It's the last time we saw her. What were the conversations that you had in the car when you dropped her off? Because I interrupted there, I'm going to go back a few seconds so you can see that whole sentence. Sorry about that. Here we go. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. It's the last time we saw her. What were the conversations that y'all had in the car when you dropped her off? Not much. She was asleep for most of the way. I told her have a good day at school when she got out. And I love her. She said, thanks. Love you too. That was it. I don't think so. So, a couple of red flags. She was asleep most of the way. Nope, according to police, they've got video evidence that she was deceased in your vehicle. Propped up. So, when he's saying that, we've seen this often when it's perps like this, right? I know he's innocent or proven guilty, but, you know, the CSAM on his phone, and, you know, there's going to be the inevitable charges, am I right? So... You know, with him saying she was asleep most of the way, we, we can see often they'll tell like half truths, you know, that she didn't talk much on the way and that he dropped her off and everything looked fine when he left. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it did. Fine according to what he was doing. He was dumping her body. And so where, where, where do you think she could possibly be? I mean, this isn't, as I was told, this isn't normal behavior. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We don't know where she can be. We're scared. We just want her home. Like a Chris Watts, huh? We just want her home. Hmm, yeah, sure you do. That's why you dumped her out there, didn't you? Are you, in a sense, blaming yourself? It's hard not to. Why? I dropped her off early. 
I could have waited longer. She looked okay. She was walking towards the school when I saw her. It was like any other day, so I went on with my day. Mm, you went on with your day. You mean driving all the way out there, getting a flat tire, <laughs> changing a tire, coming back home, and then what? Just went on with my day, liar. It's hard not to blame myself. What is the conversation? It's really hard for us not to blame you either. Conversation been with Jen since. She's been very, a lot stronger than me. She's been holding it together really well. And, uh, but it just keeps coming in waves. Just the reality keeps hitting. And we don't know where she is. We don't know if she's safe. Wipes fake tear. We're just scared. We just want her home. Have you, like, literally put boots on the ground, went out? Yeah, I even went out with the cops uh, where I had dropped her off. And we looked all up and down the road, all along the communities, and there was nothing helpful. None of the cameras were pointing the street. Nothing, which in 2024 was surprising. Mm, surprising, isn't it? <laughs> For you to pick that location as well, to be like, that's where I dropped off. Amazing, they don't really have cameras there. Only there's one far away, it's quite, quite grainy. Did you do your homework, sir? Is that why you say you dropped off there? Even though you didn't. Even though you didn't at all. Isn't this so frustrating? He's talking as if he's the victim here. You know, he's just so tiny and so timid. Meanwhile, sure. If you read through that PCA with me, which we read yesterday in that video that I've linked below for you, wow. No, oh, no, no. This is a monster right here. The church across the street had some cameras and they mentioned seeing her waiting around in the parking lot for a while before moving on. And that was it. But it was grainy. It was grainy footage and not much, not much else. Did it seem like she walked west, east? Uh, they said in the direction of the school. I'm not sure what that is. Okay then. So he needs a little map time <laughs> to keep up with his lies, right? Also, for the question to be, have you been like literally boots on the ground? And he's like, yeah, I even went out there with the cops. But they haven't been. And he's like, we looked up and down the street. Doesn't that just remind you of Trezell and Jacqueline West? When they're like, yeah, we've looked, you know, up and down the street. But then, you know, police told us to stay at home. Remember Trezell and Jacqueline West? If you don't know about the case, just check it out. We've covered it on this channel before. So it should be somewhere there on those playlists. Yeah, it's just reminding me of that. What was the language? Not language verbally language body language when you drive through all this she seemed happy was happy. she like i'm going to meet she my friends happy. she got a happy weekend she just turned 13 she had a 13th birthday party she was happy that we were all together here and she's just very happy she was a happy kid she's very sweet she's a very sweet girl she brings a lot of joy to us and we just, just not knowing I'm rolling my eyes at the type of joy that she may have brought to this monster based on the evidence against him now, which is sickening. So the unknown is killing you? Yeah, it's like our whole world is upside down. <laughs> Not feeling her presence here is... I'm sorry. It's hard. I know you're fine. Don't no need to apologize. Um, what do you want our viewers to know when they see some when they see this? She's a sweetheart. She's a very sweet, kind girl. Just please be nice to her. Bring her home if you find her. Tell her that. We please be nice to her. You weren't very nice to her. It sounds like, based on the evidence, you murdered her. He's like, please be nice to her. We love her. Wherever she is, I hope she's okay. I mean, if someone were to come in contact with her and you gave me her diagnoses, would it be easy to approach her without any like agitation or anything? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's a good kid. She's a good kid. If you can sum up in one complete sentence, waking up, getting ready to drop her off at school, dropping her off at school, to now speaking to me after talking to the police about her being missing for over 24 hours right now. And what complete sense what would that be? 
A living nightmare. It's a living nightmare. Day started off like any other. And you know, I just want to wake up. You just get hit with waves of the reality. Just it's setting in. As soon as it got dark last night, we really, we started falling apart. Cause we knew it wasn't going to come to an end. And now we're going on 24 hours and still nothing. It's conflicting reports here and there. People say they see this or that. None of it's conclusive and none of it's helpful. We just want a baby girl back. Ew, given the context. We just want our baby girl back. Oh man, and this guy being like, none of it's helpful. And we just knew it's not going to come to an end. Oh, no it is. Uh, the police want you all along. And now you're in jail. So, pretty much came to an end real quick. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows now. Your parents know. Apparently his mom has like a... I think it's like a... <laughs> like a, she, she breeds poodles or something. Someone had sent me that. I'm like, okay. But imagine what his parents are thinking now. They did show in one clip that we looked at, I think, yesterday, that his dad is saying, well, what? I'm, like, really shocked by this. Like, what do you mean? What are these allegations? Well, yep, sir, you're now where you belong. And I hope he's there for a very, very long time, based on what we know so far. If you don't know what we know so far, check out that video that I've linked for you in the description box. Because there, you're going to find a timeline overview, some map time, we're going over the documents, all of that. Okay, so... I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty nauseous now. You know, this guy, he really makes me feel sick. And I am devastated for Madeline, who was 13 years old, just turned 13. Her entire life, literally ahead of her. <laughs> Someone once said to me, how do you know? Are you God, Gisela? How do you know she had her entire life ahead of her? Well, you know what I mean. Like, one is not usually getting murdered at 13 or dying at 13, right? So she had a whole life ahead of her. Didn't even get to turn 18, let alone 28, or get married, 38, get old. Nope, nope, it seems like at the hands of this monster, she's gone. She's gone now. So I am so glad that they were able to recover her remains, that she can be put to rest properly. I'll let you know if there's anything else. Let me just take this guy off the screen. Hold on. Oh, dude, we feel better. Now we need a cleanse. I think I want to clean the whole house today. Yeah, after that. I'm not sleeping very much either. After these two cases, Audrey Cunningham, and then this case, Madeline Soto, oh my goodness, it is so horrifying, so scary. It's honestly, it really does get under your skin. Of course it does. These cases are very difficult, but this is just terrible. So thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to uh, offer you this little update today and show you this interview because we hadn't looked at this one yet. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been emailing me and sending me information. I really appreciate it. And I, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. I'll keep you posted. Okay, bye.